I stand here today as a witness, a man with eyes of his own, yet only sees what the world wants me to see. A man with ears of his own, yet only hears what the world wants me to hear. A man with mild paranoia, entangled between societies by lessons of hate and treachery and the rebellious attire to summon a change. Ladies and gentlemen, today I hold that pen that shall write the course of our time. As I please, and in the most brightest and biased way, because I want my future generations to read about a prosperous and peaceful Pakistan, washing away all the pains and defeats encountered by every one of us. From the time I've held this pen, I've lived through a lot of stories that are known to us all, yet lie contrary to their realities. Bear with me, as I narrate the tale of a man who once scattered its esteemed flag of crescent and star on his chest, but now condemns the people under the same flag. A man who strayed on the streets of Karachi, homeless and weak, rejected by the society and treated as crap. Yet we all know how glorious of a life he had. Sayyid Hussein Shah, an illustrious boxer in the history of Pakistan, was awarded with the Satara Imtiaz, to which we all blindly agree to what an honor it is. But do you know that he used garbage bags instead of punching bags for his arm practices? Do you know that he sold all his medals to buy a few medicines for his dying uncle? Do you know that he labored bricks to earn few pennies for fulfilling his hunger? The best Asian boxer begs for shoes in front of his lords, yet his lords taunt him for his asking too much. He is ridiculed for playing barefooted in India, yet manages to earn the title of being the best Asian boxer for the next five consecutive years, decorating this country with its first Olympic medal. Yet his land is confiscated, his money isn't paid, he is dealt with lies and treachery, yet we all agree to suppress his cries and manifest the petty honor we gave him because this is who we are and this is what we do. This is who we are and this is what we do. Ladies and gentlemen, people are trapped inside history and history is trapped inside them. Every fraction of ink ever spilled to fill the pages of history has always been partial. There exists a perpetual lapse between what we did and what we do. Let's not forget, I am the descendant of that great Kaith who spent nearly 35 years of his life in arduous struggle so that I can have a shelter of my own who in spite of tuberculosis, a health-sucking disease, work day and night so that I may breathe in freedom. Let's call out to him and tell him that today in his land, his daughters are not safe. They are being raped and slaughtered like animals. Let's call out to him and say that today his sons are being sacrificed in the name of sectarianism. Let's call out to him and say that today his nation has fallen a prey to the labyrinth of caste, color and creed. But this cruelty shall not be treated as cruelty, for I am the writer of these chronicles. And I shall carve my writing on this heinous lie that we are one independent nation. That we are one independent nation and are kind died peacefully in his bed and takes pride for who we are. Ladies and gentlemen, history will be kind to me for I intend to write it, but write it in a biased way. The only way forward is when we acknowledge our mistakes and we lurk away from the shadows of our despair and pains 
and look towards a brighter future. There are unrecorded bounds to the tears that haven't been swept, to the cries that haven't been heard, and to the atrocities that haven't been recorded. And all credit goes to me, for I am the writer of these chronicles. With this, I thank you all.